Electrical started today. You can see it all behind me. And it was a doozy of a day. I have the hardest time making decisions and I feel like everything is so permanent when it comes to electrical and plumbing. And so I've been printing out like a hundred different versions of plans and making huge to-do lists of what the guys need. I've been scribbling all over drawings and reprinting them over and over and like re-scribbling and changing them. Hopefully I made the right decisions, but I'll show you some of the details that I'm getting stuck on. So one of the challenges is I want to have, of course, obviously all of my outlets at the same height all the way around the room, but this window is determining a lot of that. So if we want an outlet underneath the window here, it needs to be underneath um, all of the supports in the framing, and it just means it's super low. So it's been a lot of back and forth of, do we want one under the window? Do we want to move it over here? Do we want it up here? Do we want it over here? Do we want it over here? Do we want it over here? Do we want it tucked in the corner? Do we want it over here? It's so hard to make these decisions when it looks like this and like you're just going off of measurements. And so I um, messaged Lauren and she was super duper helpful. I've tagged her here. I've shared her kitchen before. It's gorgeous. It's lovely. And so she and I were talking about the exact amounts of depth that she has on her countertop with her outlets and it was a big help. She's a doll. Um, also over here, this part isn't so challenging because I know where the cabinets are going to be and where the range is going to be and where the other cabinets are going to be. So this wasn't too hard. But once we get into the bathroom, <clears throat> it starts to become a situation where I have a vanity, but I don't know exactly where I want it. And so then where do I put the sconces and what height do I want the sconces? I haven't picked out the sconces yet. So I'm kind of just guessing and much to how Daniel pointed out the other day, he's also installing sconces and doing this exact same thing at the same time. You want them at the right height, but a lot of it depends on if they're going to hang down or if they're just going to be light here or if the sconce is going to go up. So like wherever you put the box, the light might be above it, below it or on it. So if you don't have your lighting picked out, you find yourself in a pickle like I am. Um, speaking of sconces, oh, above the um, windows, we're going to have some sconces up here. And so I had Ross help hold up the sconces the other day to pick the height. But it's just so hard to visualize when, you know, the ceiling is like this, but it doesn't really look like that. So your eye gets really tricked because there's no drywall. So not complaining, just sharing the experience and let this be a lesson in appreciating interior designers. And this is why you hire professionals because they know what they're doing and the rest of us are just kind of winging it and going off of personal experience and hours and hours of um, looking at Pinterest and hours and hours of making doodles on drawings and notes and all that good stuff. So appreciate the pros and also appreciate the trades that do all the work too because this is a pretty cool feat. That's all, bye. A little lower. A little higher. A little lower. Higher. <laughs> I could do this all day. Oh, I wanted to show one more thing. We've got this box right here, which is in the master bedroom to control the lights. And I want to add another um, switch. So it'll be a two gang switch, but it's very tight. And so the guy was like, well, maybe we can move it over here on the other side of the stud. I'm going to show you where the details matter. Hold on. Here is that same outlet in the master. Normally we have a mirror and artwork over here, but it looks very empty because I didn't want it to fall over. But if we were to take this and move it over, sure, there's room before we hit this, but that outlet would have cut into my board and batten, and that is unacceptable. So he's going to squeeze it in and fit it right here because I just, no, there's no way I would let this get a cut in here. I planned all of these out so that there wouldn't be any kind of cuts and everything fits just perfectly. So. Again, guys, it's all about the details and the electrician might think that you're 
annoying or a little neurotic or picky, but that matters not being on that board and batten detail. Now I'm done. that was going to be how your husband perished yeah i got it on video just in case he fell through i needed evidence for my insurance claim i've amassed a pile of boxes at the front door and so i thought now might be a good time for meal time um normally meal time is reserved for showing off really beautiful decor and like free product that bloggers get gifted and um really exciting things that you want to swipe up on this is not that stuff we are at that stage of the renovation where it's just like the nitty gritty details of things. And I'll just share with you how unglamorous we are at this stage. Smoke detectors, safety first. Got a few of those. We also ordered some new locks um, because our electrical panel is outside. And so we wanna lock it so that nobody flips all the breakers off. Um, yeah. Um, let's see. We got a new doorbell chime. This one is just your basic one and it sounds like that. Um, I'm gonna try and hack it so it doesn't look so ugly, but we decided we weren't gonna do a smart doorbell or anything like that. We're just gonna go with basic, simple, everyone can hear it, doorbell. Um, We also got a security light with a motion sensor um, because now that the electrician is here for the kitchen, we thought we might as well run another wire and hardwire it in. We did kind of a full look through of the house to see what other electrical stuff we wanted done and this is one of them. Um, I got this little screw extractor because we're always finding stripped screws and this helps them out and I think I had one before and I lost it so this guy does the trick. I will add a swipe up link because I think this is really helpful because strip screws are very common. Um, this one is a little more glamorous, but we got new outdoor lights. These are the exact same ones that I have outside of our back door by our master bedroom. And we got two more of them to go over the dummy door and the kitchen door. They're only like 50 bucks and they're just a really simple black, not too big, not too small, kind of understated, not crazy dramatic. I'll do a swipe up for those two. Um, also are refinancing our house. So we got a bunch of nice paperwork. Um, I guess now's the time to refinance because rates are low. And yeah, just another smoke detector. Was that glamorous and fun? It wasn't. I know. You're welcome. A few people have messaged to ask why I'm not getting a vintage doorbell, but we actually do have one right here. But the challenge is it's in the middle of the door behind the screen door. And so no one even knows to use it. So having this one here is um, a good backup for when people don't know to use that one. No one has ever opened the screen door to use this, ever. So I think it's just a cute one that we'll keep there and then we'll just use a real doorbell for um, the real doorbell. Yeah. Also, when I came out here to film that for you, I noticed we got some more fun glamour mail. And this is a transformer for the gray water actuator on the valve for underneath the shower. Super glam. I'm back with another glamorous renovation project. I'm up here in my attic um, to share with you what I have on my to-do list today. And a lot of you said that you really liked the um, non-glamorous update because you don't see that very much. So today I am figuring out what to do about the venting for the range hood. I will show you what I'm talking about. So here's the attic. 
and then here's the floor into the kitchen and bathroom. And then right over here, we're gonna put the range hood and then it's gonna come up and over and then we're gonna have a blower for venting it and then it's gonna go over and then up at the roof. So I've got the blower here. It's an external blower. So this is a little bit different than a traditional range hood where the blower is inside of it. Um, I got this one because I got it on sale and because it'll make it quieter when the blower is on in the kitchen because it'll be up in the attic. We won't hear it as much down there. So I like the idea of quieter stuff. So here's the range hood and I need to measure for the amount of ducting that I need at six inches and then at my elbow and then I have to measure for the other six inch wide ducting and then measure for the eight inch wide ducting for here. And then I need to see if I need a bunch of elbows or if we're gonna get lucky with a pretty straight shot. So that is what, oopsies, I'm doing right now. Um, yeah, that's about my glamorous update. And maybe tomorrow or so we'll have it installed. Maybe, maybe not. the second day of electrical and so you're due for an update and they've made a lot of progress so I'll show you what's going on. Yesterday they had a whole bunch of loose wires just hanging and dangling everywhere and then they started putting them into all the junction boxes. So we've got the outlets that are going to be above the counter, we've got some sconces, um, the light switches for the pendant lights which they also got right there. I am pro pendant light and not a fan of recess lights in old houses. I'm not against it, it's just we've done great without having recess lights and we don't have them anywhere else in the house, so why add them now? Um, over here we have more outlets for, from the countertops, more sconces, and then we've got um, range electricity and some other appliance electricity over here. More switches for the sconces and the pendants and the other switch over there. Um, we also put electrical inside of our closets in case we wanted to put like a clothing steamer or if we wanted to charge our phones and things in there, those will give us that option. And then in the bathroom over here, it's kind of hard to see, but we've got the outlet for by the vanity and then they're working on the sconces as well and the pendant light. So it's all coming together. I'll be sure to share a much more thorough electrical plan on the blog as well. So stay tuned for that. And I think there's only another half a day left of electrical. So this is going by a lot faster than a lot of the other trades. It's been raining for quite a while in San Diego and our little carriage house garage has a pretty crummy roof. And so it's always been leaky, but it's getting pretty bad and everything is flooded and all the appliances and things for the kitchen and bathroom renovation are in here. And it's just a constant moving them around, replasticking, sweeping. I'm starting to lose my patience with how slow this renovation is going. Cause I feel like all this stuff should be inside by now. of day three of electrical and the guys finished up pretty much everything and hopefully we'll be ready for inspection pretty soon. I'll show you the updates. Maybe Ross will show you some updates and yeah. The electrical looks pretty similar to what I showed you yesterday but everything is in its box and in its home. Um, what else? They added some also, we have three outlets on this wall, which is our pantry wall, which will be nice to store appliances and things that can use power um, while they're stored away. Sconces all found their home. Um, in hindsight, I probably should have not had them put the actual J boxes in and then just had them do this where they leave it there so I could move it around later. But at some point I do need to make a decision. So I made a decision. 
and I'm proud of myself because I never make decisions, right? That's correct. Yeah, I can't, I can't decide on things. Um, over here, I mentioned the other day the, um, that switch and how I kind of forced almost the electrician to begrudgingly put um, the two gang switch right here instead of just the one and then or moving it over here. And now it's a perfect fit on that wall. Um, yeah, that's our nice like spaghetti pile of um, electrical. That's a term, right? Spaghetti pile? Spaghetti pile. Yeah, it's what, I think that's what the pros say. I mean, I'd say it's more realistic to call that a spaghetti pile than to call that a sconch, in my opinion. <laughs> um, yeah. That's it. Hopefully soon, there's just a couple like tiny loose ends and then hopefully like the electrical, plumbing, framing, uh, rough in inspection can happen Monday. Fingers crossed. Tomorrow is inspection day. So the inspector is gonna come and check out the rough framing, rough plumbing and rough electrical. And I'm just gonna keep my fingers crossed that there's no major changes that he's gonna ask of us and that it goes smoothly. So in light of that, I thought I'd give you a brief update on what it looks like now before inspection happens tomorrow. In light of that, I thought I'd give you a brief update on what it looks like now before inspection happens tomorrow. In brief, not much has changed with plumbing and electrical. Um, they've been working on the venting for the range hood and the bathroom fan. And then today they built a little box so that the HVAC vent for the heating and air conditioning can come out from underneath a cabinet, which will go right there. Um, yeah, there's not a whole lot of difference, but uh, the plan is right now I'm going to try and kind of clean up so it looks a little bit prettier. And then... Um, the inspector is going to come tomorrow to inspect all of the rough and stuff, and then we'll add the insulation, and then the inspector will come back to inspect that, and then we'll add the drywall, and then the inspector will come back to inspect that, and then I will install the floors, and then we're going to try and move back in temporarily, and it's going to be good. I'm excited. Fingers crossed it goes well tomorrow. Guess who just left and gave us good news? That's right, you guessed it. It was the inspector. We passed our rough in plumbing and electrical and framing and underground and foundation, which they didn't even look at. Um, so we can move on to insulation and drywall, which is really great. Um, I was actually really looking forward to the inspector looking through everything and like going through it all with a fine tooth comb. Ross says that that's because that's the Leslie Nope in me where I want like the satisfaction of having someone really check the work. But I also just really wanted to be reassured that the guys that have been working on the project have been doing it right. Um, so I'm a little disappointed that he didn't look through, but I'm also just really glad that we have been signed off and we can carry on and do the next step. So I'm about to place an online order to pick up a bunch of sheathing to prep the floors to make the subfloor all level. And then hopefully we're gonna install the door and the window this week. So, very excited.